Well, as a Sri Lankan diplomat, uh, I must confess that I've been uh, profoundly influenced by the philosophy of the Buddha, which is essentially a nonviolent philosophy, and also by the example of Mahatma Gandhi of India. And uh, as a consequence, I devoted a great deal of my professional life towards the pursuit of peace and disarmament, representing my country in the Conference on Disarmament. But I think the major high point of my diplomatic career was when I was president of the NPT Review and Extension Conference of 1995, because on that conference decision hinged the entirety of the NPT's future. Now, since 1995, except for the success of the conference of 2000, when I was no longer representing my country, but was the UN Under Secretary General for Disarmament, and we had a collective effort to try to make sure that the 95 decision was vindicated, and we did. There has unfortunately been a slide since then, and uh, I find that more and more countries are resiling from the commitments they made, both in 95 and in 2000. In 2000, there were uh, 13 steps that were agreed to, and the unequivocal undertaking of the nuclear weapon states that they would eliminate nuclear weapons. But during the entire period of uh, 2000 till today, we have not seen that happen. And it is only with the emergence of President Obama that we have this unique opportunity of seeing the fulfillment of the commitments that were made. But we've also seen backward steps with regard to non-nuclear weapon states, with the uh, North Koreans leaving the treaty and testing twice. We have also seen questions being raised with regard to Iran and Syria. So we need to restore confidence and faith in the NPT. And I believe very strongly that international peace and security can be achieved by having the rule of law imposed and by having uh, treaties that are strong and robust and with have, which have uh, verifiable means of uh, ensuring the obligations both by the non-nuclear weapon states and the nuclear weapon states because this is a bargain that was entered into when the treaty was negotiated and it is now almost 40 years since it entered into force. Uh, it is the only treaty in which the nuclear weapon states multilaterally commit themselves to nuclear disarmament. So they must fulfill their bargain and the non-nuclear weapon states must also fulfill their promises to remain non-nuclear. The nuclear weapon is unquestionably the most destructive weapon that humankind has invented. And it hung over the international community like a shadow throughout the period of the Cold War. With the end of the Cold War, which is 20 years ago now, we all, I think, were lulled into a sense of false complacency, thinking that the threat of a nuclear exchange was no longer there. But in fact, the centrality of the nuclear weapon issue has once again reappeared. It has reappeared for several reasons. One is that we have the problem of climate change where countries are now moving away from carbon emitting fuels and looking to developing nuclear energy. And with that comes more and more dangers of people diverting from the peaceful uses of nuclear energy to non-peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Secondly, we have the problem of international terrorism. And the fact that we know that there are groups like Al-Qaeda who are looking for nuclear weapon materials and technology. And they will use it unhesitatingly for their nihilistic purposes. So we have this new phenomenon of weapons of mass destruction terrorism. And then, of course, we have more and more countries who are acquiring nuclear weapons. Today, there are three countries and probably four, if you count the North Koreans, who are outside the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and completely untouched by the disciplines of that treaty. And uh, it is likely that more and more countries will acquire this weapon because as long 
as countries see as nuclear weapons as a badge, as it were, of uh, nuclear weapon power status, they want to acquire it. So we need to therefore move rapidly towards a verifiable nuclear weapon convention which will outlaw nuclear weapons. And I think that is what is at the heart of the problems that we have because the promises in the past of nuclear disarmament have not been fulfilled as speedily as possible. There is a new sense of urgency now with regard to the nuclear weapon issue and that has been introduced, I believe, at the highest level by President Obama and it is, I think, being uh, subscribed to by other nuclear weapon states. So we have this combined effort both on the part of the nuclear weapon states and the non-nuclear weapon states to move rapidly towards the nuclear weapon uh, free world. I think following the op-ed articles that appeared uh, in the Wall Street journals of 2007 and 2008 by George Schultz, Henry Kissinger, William Perry and Sam Nunn, there are similar articles that have appeared in Germany, in Britain here, in, uh, the, in the French uh, Republic, uh, as well as in many other countries. And these are all supportive of the vision of a nuclear weapon-free world. I think that uh, convergence of opinion is very important. We also have uh, the United Kingdom talking about converting the United Kingdom into a disarmament laboratory and taking some steps with regard towards that uh, by having a decision to uh, have only three Trident systems and not four. We have uh, the French also uh, with President Sarkozy announcing new initiatives. Uh, we have the Germans talking about uh, removing uh, U.S. nuclear weapons from their soil. We have a number of uh, groundswell movements uh, at the uh, level of civil society. There is a Global Zero movement which was launched in December last year where a hundred people assembled in Paris and uh, launched this objective of having a global zero. Uh, the plan is by 2030 to have this uh, achieved. We also have another uh, commission sitting at the moment uh, led by Gareth Evans of Australia and uh, Madam Kawaguchi of Japan who are likely to come out with a report early in 2010 also calling for the eventual achievement of a nuclear weapon free uh, world, but of course in verifiable stages. So there is therefore a common movement now that is taking place and it's uh, very perceptible that after long years of uh, relatively inactive uh, debates, uh, which an inconclusive debates on the issue of uh, nuclear weapon disarmament and non-proliferation, we are finally begin to see some significant movement. I believe very soon that we will converge and come to a common agreement as to what steps we need towards uh, having the elimination of nuclear weapons. But I think we do all agree on the goal, and that is a global zero, a nuclear weapon-free world. How long it will take to get there is the subject of dispute at the moment.